Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we definitely need to change that now. Things have changed. Sham Sharania to my right, Chandler P. Lou Will to my left. My name's Michelle, and this is Run It Back, FanDuel TV, and man, we are starting to whittle it down to those that will move on to the second round. Lakers, you're out. Mm. The Nuggets took care of that last night. Mm -mm -mm. Murray and Jokic, 108-106. Jokic with 25, 20, and 9. Murray had his 32, including, of course, another game winner. Uh, Porter mm. Jr. had a night. LeBron with 30, 11, and 9. AD finished with 17 points, 15 rebounds. But the Lakers lose, and now it begins, Shams. It actually began as soon as this game ended, I would have to say. But... <sighs> We're going to be asking you all these questions. What happens to LeBron? What happens to Darvin Ham? So let's start. There's okay. three prongs to this. Let's start with LeBron James. I'm told LeBron ex is expected to play up to two more NBA seasons. So he okay. just finished year 21. He's going to play at least 23 is from what I'm told, potentially up to 23. He's got a $51.4 million player option. He could opt in. How much? Uh, he Dang. could opt out. 51.4. <laughs> The Lakers are willing to give him whatever he wants, essentially. Mm. If it's a one-year max, a two-year max, even a three-year, $164 million maximum contract if he wants to come back. Mm. LeBron James is going to have to monitor exactly how they handle the offseason, how they build a roster. Clearly, there needs to be changes to this roster. His option date deadline is June 29th. Interesting timing, right? It's mm -hmm. right before free agency and right after the draft. And what's potentially on draft night? His son, Bronny James. And in a perfect world... The Lakers have LeBron James back, and potentially they draft Bronny James. I'm told they are interested in of picking him in are. the draft in June. And you know, Bronny James obviously will have a decision to make going through the pre-draft process. So that is where they stand with LeBron James and where they stand potentially with Bronny James. The other big question is the future of Darvin Ham. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told his job status is in serious peril. It is highly unlikely that he will be back <laughs> as head coach of this team. I think there's several factors. We've been talking about it for months. The disconnect with rotations, game plans, adjustments. No uh, timeouts yesterday. After the in-season tournament, they lost 10 of 13 games. And the, the benchings of Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell in December into January, that plays a, a part as well internally in the organization and externally. The Lakers really believe that they had the talent this season to potentially go further than they did, hmm. uh, make a potential deeper run, have a higher seed. And now they're going to go and look and be aggressive in the marketplace. One player to keep an eye on, Trey Young. Really? <laughs> okay, so the minute anybody takes the head coaching job of a LeBron team, the writing's on the wall. Like, that's not a job you're going to do for 20 years. So let's start with Darvin Ham. Any shock there? I'm not shocked just because this is what comes with being the coach of the Lakers. This is what comes with being the coach of a LeBron James team. There's pressure to win. There's pressure to, uh, you know, con contend for a championship. And he did do some weird things. I don't think he's the best coach of all time. Sure. I think his substitution patterns were a little weird. His rotations with, you know, riding Cam Reddish for so long and his whole starting lineup thing with benching D'Lo and then benching Austin Reeves. He kind of was all over the place with his rotations. But... This team, he didn't construct this team. He didn't, Spencer Dinwiddie wasn't his big move at the deadline. He didn't put a, the Gabe Vincent. We thought he was going to be this hero. That, that wasn't on Darvin Ham. And, yes, a lot of it falls on him. But when it's a LeBron James team, a lot of that is on him. And we all know damn well he's pretty much the coach, the GM, and the owner of this team. So the Darvin Ham is just – usually he's just the, the coach is the fall guy. And yeah. I don't – like, again, I don't know him at all. But I, from the outside looking in, I feel like he did a pretty good job. The, the Lakers – they competed this series. They lost on two buzzer beaters. They were up double digits yeah. in pretty much every game. Like it's not like they just got their ass kicked. They got swept. It, it, it was it was close. It was tight. They could have won most of these games that they lost. But most coaches get the raw end of a deal. It's going to happen a lot. It's going to happen to JB Biggerstaff in Cleveland. It happens. It's going to happen to mul multiple coaches. It's just how it goes. And especially when you're in the Lakers and you're with LeBron James, there's expectations and there's tons of pressure. It's different. I've played for the Clippers. I've played for the, the Lakers. Completely different atmospheres hmm. when it comes to personnel, right? 
When you, when you play for the Lakers, it's a championship or nothing atmosphere for that organization, for that fan base, for everybody that li loves the purple and gold. If you fall short of championships, the first person they're always going to look at is the coach. Think about it. Every time the Lakers fall short in the playoffs, we have a conversation about the coach. This is not a new story with Darwin Ham. This is whoever's in that seat, they're going to feel it from somebody they feel who's more than capable of getting them to that place. And so this doesn't surprise me at all that this is the conversation um, surrounding the Lakers and Darwin Ham. To me, when you're coaching a team like this and it's a bunch of egos and big names like that, it's, it's more like like having a relationship with him, right? And the hmm. dynamic of the sub. I saw Darvin Ham was going to pull LeBron James out yesterday, and he literally told him no. So, like, you can't even blame Darvin Ham on the substitutions because he doesn't even have that power to make those decisions during a game, especially in the playoffs and elimination games. So, again, he's got to be the leader. He's got to get along with these personalities. He's got to he's got to have that dynamic, and maybe there's a disconnect there. But X's and O's wise, you got to believe LeBron is doing what he wants on the court. This yeah. isn't up to Darvin Ham. Why would anyone want the job well, while LeBron? The there. players do, to an extent, want to be coached, but there's a lot of player empowerment, of course, on this team. I mean, one incident that I reported on uh, last night, this morning, whatever you want to call it, February 28th, it was a win against the Clippers at home, or the Lakers' home, it was, it was, it, or the Clippers' home. It was in L.A. It was a Clippers' home game at Crypto.com Arena, and, and they were down about 19 points to start the fourth quarter, and really from around six, six minutes in, five minutes in, the players took the onus of, of essentially calling the plays. And they, they noticed that there was a switch potential with Daniel Tice uh, in the pick and roll, and they attacked it over and over and over again, and they ended up winning the game. LeBron had scored or assisted 11 of 13 baskets, and that was a group of players that came together, started play calling. Now, I'm not saying Darvin Ham, that's the norm, they went though. against Darvin Ham. That's, yeah. that's a normal thing, Shams, especially when you got a LeBron James or you got a Steph right. Curry or Kevin Durant, any of these type of guys that um, can make adjustments during games, they see something, and sometimes you can wave your coach off. If, if you have that trust and they have, you have that relationship with your coach and he's calling something, you're calling, you're calling something, the rule is to always listen to the player on the court. So even if the coach is screaming at the top of his lungs and I got the ball and I'm calling something, the four guys on the floor have to listen to me. That's the rule. That pretty much goes for not even just star play. Like if we're on the Nuggets and we see they can't guard a Michael Porter pin down, you know, I don't care if, if Malone's calling a different play. We're Doesn't riding matter. that till they till they stop it. So that <laughs> goes with pretty much every offense and every team, especially a LeBron James. Team. But like you said, these things are glaring when it's the Los Angeles Lakers. Everybody is right. doing the same thing in the league. But with the Los Angeles Lakers, they have a complete different media aspect uh, that people look at that no other team in the league has. So who, I mean, let's just, the world is your oyster. Who, who's coaching this Lakers team? Who's ideal? I mean, I mean, listen, Darwin Ham couldn't, couldn't get better production out of, his, out of his bench. He can't coach that, right? Maybe yeah. you, can, you can make the argument that he can put them in better positions. Um, the play calling can be different. At the end of the day, guys got to go out and perform. I think he gets one more shot at it. Really? Uh, that's just my guess. Okay. You can't change coaches every year. You, well, you could. You could. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they're going to do every, anything they can to bring LeBron back. So yeah. it's basically if LeBron wants him back, or who right. does LeBron want? They're talking about they're going to give him an extension, they're going to draft, gonna his, draft his, his son. Kid. Of course, they're going to give him the head coach, they're going to do all that. So well, we would have no clue. It's basically whoever he think is the, thinks is the best fit. Well, the good news is we didn't have to wait long for the LeBron postseason fun to begin. He kicked it off right after this game last night. Here he is. Have you given any initial thoughts of what comes next this summer or for next season? Uh, no, I just want to get on to the family, honestly. Um, um, start looking at the schedule, obviously. I got, uh, you know, my son, one of my boys is just trying to decide if he's going to, you know, enter the draft or go back to school. I got another kid that's uh, playing AU ball right now. My daughter is playing uh, volleyball. Um, and my wife is doing so many great things. So it's about family right now. And then in a couple months, I got to go to Vegas for training camp. <laughs> so, you know, I got to rest my body for, for USAB, but um, you know, that's kind of the initial thoughts. Tonight, was there any thought at all that, you know, this could have been your last game with the Lakers? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and so it begins. <laughs> The off season of mystery. <clears throat> like I said, this is, this is normal, right? He's always held his cards close when it comes to free agency, when it comes to changing teams. And as players, that's what we always respected about LeBron. He's always been one step ahead of business decisions when it comes to the jersey that he wears, the teammates that he's going to play with, the coaching. Mm -hmm. He's always in control of his destiny. And, and that's something that he's earned, and you got to respect in season 21.
Is there a world in which somebody, another team, does a petty draft of Bronny just to, saw, to see what would happen? I saw something so funny. This dude tweeted, the Nuggets should draft Bronny and yeah. then not <laughs> sign LeBron. <laughs> like, is there, is there a world in which we could that see something That has a lot petty? of double meaning. Oh, too. that would just be such a power play. I mean, this is definitely going to be a one-of-a-kind situation where you have one of the best to ever do it sort of hold the organization to the fire to bring his kid, which again, this, there's or, so many levels to this because then you think about the kid and like, do you even want to the, enter like this? That's the thing, say he already has a deal in place with whoever the Lakers, yeah. whoever, that doesn't mean a team in front of them can't just hop in that's and take I'm him saying. knowing that all LeBron James wants is to play with his son. Hey, so, <laughs> hell yeah, if I'm but a contender. On the flip side, you don't, do you don't draft a kid that doesn't want to be there in the first place. If I'm like OKC or <laughs> one of these teams that have draft picks and they're already in contention, why the hell wouldn't I take Brian James if that means I get LeBron? Well, this is what I'll say. I would do it. A thousand percent. If it's a team in the first round, I'm sure that'll work out exactly how Bronny James wanted. He's going to go in the first round. If he goes in the Great second point. round and you get drafted there, obviously the team that's picking him, there, there's some level of, like, we want you. There's a desire level there. And at that point, I think LeBron James is a father. I think, I think Bronny James, he has his own representation as well. Like, he's going to have to make the best decision for his career as well as far as if there's a team in the second round, not the Lakers, that'll draft you early in the second round potentially, give you more guaranteed money. Mm. Like, that's a better situation for you individually. For sure. Plus, he and, can jump back into the portal, right? Like, and also, worst case, let's be clear. If it looks like this it's not This whole time, happening. LeBron has said this is a preference. It's not, it's not ride or die. It absolutely, he would love to have This is it the happen. Lakers making it known. We Lou. support this, and but, we want to make it happen. <laughs> absolutely. And Lewis. Lewis Bartholomew <laughs> Williams. No, you know damn good and well. Right, and we'll, be here, and we'll be here in June <laughs> talking about, well, you were right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, again, we're talking about LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. At the end of the day, Bronny has shown that he's created some separation. He has his own, <clears throat> has his own representation, which is still the same thing. But at some point, as a grown man, he's going to want to make decisions for who's himself. Th That's the best decision. Who's Bronny's? Who's Bronny's agent? Same agent, Rich you Paul. Know agent Plus but, but this is the, this is the thing. Let's say, <laughs> let's say, let's say there's a team CAA? at like 35 that wants him, really wants him, and will give him more guaranteed Ooh. money. I, yeah, it's got. Oh. It does the, matter who. The wants who? The, well, he's got to go through the pre-draft. I'm process. saying Bronny. Bronny. Yeah. I'm saying it gives him more guaranteed money. That is the problem that no one's talking. No one really wants him unless they're getting LeBron. He's not. He's not like this next big thing. He's not I like, disagree. You know I, mean? like, I, I think, I think he do? has potential. Well, I'm just like I, what is. I thought the team only would want him because of LeBron James. Like no, that that kid is. A, a, he's going to be a talent. You've, you've talked to people that said... Yeah, I mean, the question he... isn't if is Bronny James a draft pick for multiple teams. It's where is he going to go in the draft and is he going to be comfortable enough with wherever he lands in the pre-draft process to stay in the draft? <laughs> That's the question. This guy, LeBron, already knows who's drafted him. He already knows where he's yeah. playing, and he's he knows everything. He, didn't you think he's just doing this just to do it? He know he, this guy runs the whole that league. Part is, but uh, again, uh, if, the, if that was the, if that was the case, he'd had no problem saying yes. I'll be back with the Los Angeles Lakers no, next year. No, why would he but that's do not that? His that's game. Not, yeah, he's that's never not done his that. Style. No, but this is our first time ever seeing it for this reason. It's always been about LeBron James. Now he's holding his cards for Bronny James. And he, actually, I take that back. He's done this in Cleveland when he wanted to get J.R. Smith signed, when he wanted to get Tristan Thompson signed, when he <laughs> wanted to get all those guys back. He held the cards and said, make sure you pay my guys, and then I'll, I'll commit to it. He's doing the same Just thing now. Know, he's always in control. When we see happens. Bronny James officially declare for the draft, yeah. That shit is done. Then it's done. Everyone knows. He, LeBron knows. He knows exactly where he's going. There's no he's way he's just going to enter locker. the draft and like see where he goes like every other normal kid in the world. It's LeBron not LeBron James is only has that pool when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers. I you think the Orlando Magic care about LeBron James. I think he could be talking. I think Rich Paul if, could be talking to the Orlando Magic if right they now. Want his, if they want Bronny, Bronny is his own entity. He's already created that. He's already created that 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 level of conversation. Uh, no. No. Yes. No, not on his talent yet. Absolutely. No, because that's the whole thing, right? Is that this seems premature, but they're going to sort of test the waters and see if it's viable. And then he always has the option to go back to school. The numbers weren't there, but he also was on minutes restriction. The kid just had heart surgery. <laughs> right. So he, yeah, he didn't have the season that he wanted, but he's been a pro prospect for it. But that, the whole health issue is also another since glaring issue. Since he was issue. conceived, Lou? Because that doesn't count. <laughs> no, <laughs> for the past two years. Listen, he's I think a, he has a, a chance a to... McDonald's All-American goes, goes to a, a Well, D1. there's been players that have been picked in the second round with, with worse stats. That's what I mean. I think, sure. listen, there's I always... Have any second round is real. Sure, what are we talking about? It's, there is a chance in college. <laughs> Those things are projections. Uh, you guys know. There is obviously a chance that he can be a better pro than he was college player. He hasn't been a great college player yeah. with the inconsistency of his health and his minutes, like Lou just said. All I'm saying is whoever drafts him in the back of their head, you don't think it's partially because we can get his dad? 
1,000 percent. That's the only I, like yes, the guess. Listen, maybe the potential sure is he could thought? do. Absolutely. Oh but yeah, it's the main what, thought. What we're saying is LeBron James is in control of that. I disagree. I, I, it's teams that could give a shit less what his opinion or what his preferences are. I, I do want someone to draft before the Lakers. Right. Like that, I want someone to cut. Really their, I want someone to cut their legs. Just out, be like, <laughs> like Chicago. Just take him and we're make next. LeBron. Like, yeah. See how serious he is. God, that would be an amazing draft. I might actually watch an entire draft at that point. But guess what? Lakers did not win. Well done, LeBron. So we didn't even all talk summer about long, that. we're gonna see like LeBron and like Boston, and we're gonna be oh shit. This, this the Celtics. He's looking at places to <laughs> yeah. live. Oh, I that know a realtor that said he's looking to rent a place there for That's one year. Start, in start Portland. breaking. Yeah, down. exactly. Why is LeBron in Charlotte? Oh, God. oh no. Uh, there was a winning team last night, however, and it was the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray, come on down once again. Uh, second game winner of mm. the series. Mm. I mean, not doing it once is cool, Chandler. Doing it twice, and you could see his reaction after this one. He. Mm -hmm. He was like, wow, that just happened. First of all, it's a damn shame it took us 16 minutes to start talking about the team that won. Classic. But that is the world that we live in. But yeah, <laughs> I love, listen, Jamal Murray, the fact that he has done this now twice, and he was feeling so last night. He punched on LeBron last night, and he hit him with his own, he hit him with his celebrity with the shoulder, the celebration with the shoulder <laughs> shrug. And this is just the dynamic that when you talk about the best duos in the NBA, the fact that Jokic is obviously their everything, he's their best player, but you have a ball dominant guard like that, that you can put the ball in his hands, he can create shots, he's an excellent ISO player, and now down the stretch, having him as that luxury, don't worry about that, Michelle, That's thank me. you. Um, it's unbelievable, just a clutch, big time shot to do it again, to put out LeBron and the Lakers, this is just an epic, epic shot and great performance. It's huge. I just gotta add, first player in NBA history to have back, have two, Game-winning field goals in five seconds wow. of a game in the same series. In one series. That is, and it I mean, was questionable to play in this game? Yeah, it's, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, because, you know, when I see questionable now, I Lou had a point, anybody. though. I know Lou. Yeah. Lou's ready. No, it, it was just about the game. For me, it was about the supporting cast. Like, we're going to talk about Jamal Murray. We're obviously going to talk about Jokic, but give Porter Jr. credit. Poured in 26 points. Stuff. Made mm -hmm. very timely, timely baskets when they needed him. Got some big stops as well. And I thought that was the Achilles heel for the Lakers this whole year. Didn't get very much out of their bench. Understand Gabe Vincent was dealing with some injury stuff, trying to find his rhythm. Spencer Dinwiddie coming over halfway through the season. But them guys could have played better, could have gave them more. But um, Denver got everything they could out of their supporting cast. It's <laughs> We got matcha. Everywhere. Yeah, that's on, like I, it's, we're trying to be professional, we but we got, got a, a bloody mess back down here. Below. <laughs> so, something bad happened. Look, here's the thing, because you know, in that second game, the, the first game winner, I should say, the second game, um, he didn't have the best game, but then he had that moment. So it's kind of crazy when we talk about Jamal Murray. This time he had 32 minutes or 32 points in 41 minutes. I mean, hasn't made an all-star team. We've talked about this numerous times. We, we're always trying to figure out who's the next most underrated player, and this argument seems pretty logical for him. Yeah, it's him. And we talked about Sabonis early on, and then Jamal Murray, he's that guy. He is the most underrated player. He's probably the best player to never not make an all-star game. It's because of this. It's insane. How? He's a, yeah, he's a How's champion. Like, It'll how, change, guys. What else does he have to do for us to start respecting him and giving us this credit? And even us, we, I think when we talked about the best duos in the no, NBA no. or the beginning of the season, we're talking about like KD and Bug swept. We're talking uh, about LeBron and uh, you swept. are I always I know, had these I know. guys. I, Get listen, him, Lou. it's hard Get him. not to put them at the at the very top. They're the champs. They've been one of the most dominant. Them in Boston have been the most the best teams all year long that we trust the most. So, and when you have a player like Jokic that everything goes through, but at the end of the game you don't have to go through him and you can have this guy handle the ball and play that two man game and pick and roll. It's such a luxury. But even the shot that he just got off. Jokic in a pick and roll, you gotta respect that you can't help. He's coming off Nick at one on one. 100%. It's such a lovely luxury to have, Shams. But yeah, they mentioned it. The fact that he was quote unquote questionable before this one. Not only did he not look questionable, then he does what he does. What, what was the decision making process? Like? Him and Mike Malone had a pretty, I, I think, emotional conversation before the game because you think about it with a calf strain, and, and I, clearly it wasn't uh, significant enough like Giannis's is. To, to sit him, you know, and, and Giannis literally could just started running after two and a half, three weeks. <laughs> it wasn't that for Jamal Murray, but it was a conversation of, is it worth the risk? Even if it's slightly, you could pull it again, <clears throat> could worsen it. But he plays, and Michelle, to me, he's one of the best clutch players in recent playoff memory. I mean, you think about, I was there in the 2020 bubble. That's when, to me, Jamal Murray first showed up as, as a potential star player in this league, and, and he had a lot of big-time moments. Last year in the, in, the, you know, in the run to the championship, 
you could say that Nikola Jokic is their best player, but Jamal Murray is their closer in a lot of ways. Nikola Jokic, we know he can score and he can rebound and all that, but Jamal Murray, you need a shot. You're going to him and two game winners in one series. It's kind of First amazing. player to ever do that. It's very, well, very you impressive. Can, you can have that. Giannis can be the Bucks' best player, but Dame's a closer. Shaq was the best player. Kobe is a closer. You, you know, it doesn't have to be that person at the end of the game. You know what I mean? That's what makes this team so Jalen Williams, half, half the time, is OKC's closer. SGA is their best player. Like, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that guy down the stretch. And Jamal Murray is their guy down the stretch. You know where I thought the Lakers made a mistake yesterday? I thought they played into him being injured too much. Really? To, yeah, to start that game, if you if you go back and look, to start that game in the first quarter, maybe halfway through the second, they were allowing him to shoot. He was hobbled a little bit. He was limping around. He was getting wide oh, open yeah. looks, and that gave him an opportunity to for his adrenaline to kick in, for that not to be a, a factor. Now he's in a rhythm. You allowed a guy to get wide open shots. Now fourth quarter, you got to deal with him. I think the Lakers were too much worried about him being injured instead of putting pressure on him. <laughs> they were just allowing him to shoot. It's like he Kaiser soze them. It just <laughs> yeah. lulled them into this weight situation. But then questionable turns into the slam dunk on LeBron. I, again, like questionable mm. is a very interesting word. In the Don't hit him with his own shoulder shrug right here. Too. Nasty. Uh. Yeah. Nasty. Get him. Yeah. That's fun. He'll have that poster on his wall forever. Forever Ooh. and ever and ever. Yeah, that's, that's nasty. Uh, uh, LeBron yeah. just did it. I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but LeBron just did that shoulder shrug to play before this, too. So I love, again, the pettiness. Quick turnaround. I yeah. like when you can do it right away. Yeah, live in the moment. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so the 4-1 series win, uh, by the way, th this, they made a lot of this last night, and they should have, because the Lakers had a lead in all of these games, basically. And 20 the, minutes the one in, is we're the still on the Lakers. Yeah, we're still Gotta doing it. it. But that being said, there never seems to be any worry. If you're watching them, you're like, they'll figure it out. Jokic is the best player on the team, but his supporting cast, where would you put them? What's up there is that when you talk about their starting five, their bench has their holes, but their starting five is elite. And the way that they fit with the, the two-headed monster of Murray and Jokic, how they play pick and roll, how they play a two-man game, but then they space the floor with one of the best perimeter shooters and Michael Porter Jr., who's hmm. been absolutely flamed Crazy. this series. He set a franchise record this year. And then Aaron Gordon, he gives that luxury where he can guard the best big. He can go ver he can go that versatile small ball lineup where they just fit. And again, their bench we thought would be an issue, but they just go, they only go six, seven, maybe eight some nights deep. Their starting five is so elite and they all know their roles. KCP's knocking down shots. He plays defense. So when you have a guy on a team like this that they're bought in. They don't care about anything other than winning. They know Jokic is the guy. He's going to get MVP. He's going to get all the talk about. Murray is the next in line. And then these other guys just play their role, and they play it perfectly. And they're just a really, really good fit basketball-wise. Aaron Gordon wasn't like this in Orlando. It's kind like, of it's, oh, you know it's what I mean? his like, place. It's, it's the, 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 this is a way better fit for him. He found his place. That means everything. We're going to take a quick break right here. When we come back, another game happened. We shall discuss. We're on the back returns. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Ants are coming. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. And the other game. Right. Celtics Heat cruised 102 88. They're 18 0 when holding their opponents under 100 points. Derek White, though, had the big night 38 4 3. Eight of those were three pointers. Tatum with 20 10 5. Bam had his 20 and 17. But after game two, the Celtics have now won games three and four by 20 and 14 points, Lou. Jeez. What's going on? Playtime's up. <laughs> That's what's going on. Playtime's up. Boston Celtics have decided they don't want to make this thing interesting. They're starting to be the dominant team that they've been all season, sending a message to the Miami Heat while they're down Jimmy Butler and other guys trying to get rid of them. And you could, the, their defense has changed drastically where they gave up yeah. 88 points last night and they gave up 84 points in game three. That is elite, locked in, focus on that level. We don't give them a lot of credit for their defense. No, and but we should because... But when a team like this, thing. when it happens early, I think this is good for the Boston Celtics because they can look in the mirror, they can watch them and say, damn, we're, we're, you know, we're not perfect. We can be beat. And the Miami Heat gave them that kind of piece mm -hmm. of humble pie there in game two to where now they responded. They went to Miami and that these games weren't even close and they defended them on their home court. They took away the three-point line. They scrambled, they switched, they were physical. That's the way that the Boston Celtics need to play because they, they, they have the, the potential. They have the best guard defender in the NBA, I think, Drew Holiday. And their wings, mm -hmm. they can switch. They're, they can go small, they can go big. So th this is their defense. They gave up 88 and 84 points. I don't care who you are, you're gonna win a lot of basketball games. 
The um, the Kristaps Porzingis moment, by the way, that was big because you know everyone's looking across the landscape, going, if you could just stay injury free, and then looking at Boston, like they're okay. And then he goes out in the second quarter. What's the latest? The Celtics evaluated his calf, his Achilles, after the game, and they identified that it, it, the sense is it's not an Achilles, which it looked. Listen, he the way he stepped, the way he looked, the way he moved. You see that step ooh, that, ooh, ooh. that has the obviously the look. You can make Idiot. make up make whatever you want out of that, but. The testing showed it's it's more of a calf uh, issue, it's obviously potentially a strain. Um, yeah. So he's going to get testing today, an MRI today, that'll give them the full scope. But Chris Osborne has missed time with injuries, with these lower body soft tissue injuries. And uh, it could be, you know, for him in the past so far in the regular season, it's been weeks. They've been cautious with him. Let's see how long it'll be in the playoffs. But Had a feeling. with those issues, with seriousness like that, non-contact, we saw Giannis with a non-contact calf injury, he's been out three weeks and counting. Yeah, this is, and this, it's how many calves or Achilles have we been are seeing? Are people not and, doing calf raises? What yeah, are they doing? Well, they gotta go old like, school. Well, how can we make this Hands on the wall <laughs> and calf raise it up to strengthen <laughs> these on, things. Now. But it's, it's, and this is tough because KP, obviously, he's had flashes of brilliance yeah. this year where he has been that third guy. He has been that great, you know, accessory to, to Brown and Tatum, and he can pick a pop, he can stretch the floor. And when he's on, the Celtics are really, really good. And this is a team that we always talk about. They're not deep. They don't have a great bench. They do get a little production there, but they need to be fully loaded to really, really have a chance to win a championship. It's queer, crazy. I was just thinking the other day, like, if anyone were to get hurt on the Celtics, it would be him. And then it happened. Why is that? Like, I don't know. It's just I felt like every team sort of been struck <laughs> by the bug. Juju. I'm a witch. I forgot to tell you guys. Um, there was a, there was the flagrant foul that has been up for discussion since the moment. This was called. so whack to me. Look yeah. So talk to me about. It's after the whistle, by the way. But is this worthy? I mean, listen. I know the rule, the Zaza Pachulia rule, right here, where you can't slide under someone's foot, and that's if the game Ooh, even before the whistle. After, yeah. Before the whistle or after the whistle, I get it, because this is the rule where. Be bad. But also, like Tatum shouldn't shoot the ball after either. So there like, you know. if, if he's gonna shoot it, I'm gonna play defense, but. There's nothing here. Like again, I, they're friends. Like they're, they're, this isn't like a hot, you know, it's matchup. Where they're, yeah, it's not like he's trying to hurt him. They're like, this is silly. Like this is this is not a flagrant foul. I know the rule. If you have to give him space to land, but that's, isn't that during the game? This is like, if he did this after the whistle and warm-ups, is it a flagrant foul? Like, what I the agree. Fuck? Remember when Joe Mazzulla came out and yeah. contested a shot? Yeah, like that this, didn't happen. This is think? just so, we're talking playoff basketball where it's more physical and there's there's you know they let him play. <clears throat> now they're not even letting him play after the whistle. Like come on, this is a joke. You didn't think it was anything there, right? I didn't think it was any. I didn't think it was anything. If anything, it would be the opportunity to land. But Chandler mentioned, after. why are you even shooting the ball after the whistle? Everything is free game. It's a dead ball. And uh, the ankle injury, of course, everyone's just like, <gasps> Shams. What's? Is there anything there? Do we need to be worried about this? Um, Tell me, it's his calf. Finish the game. Yeah, yeah. But so, is there anything, so we're good. He, you know. So. I think I think the hope is they close it out the next game. It's a calf and get issue. Some rest. It's, a calf. it's yeah. another calf. God, it's Ho calf. Ho hopefully it's not a calf. Bro. He did have a slam though that happened right before. A all slam. The slam. Dog. Oh, that sounds really cool when I say that. Oh, and this is after the angle. No, this is before the angle. Understood. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. See, there's, there's some stuff going. Hold on. that, Martin. After the the tough hard foul Martin gave him early on, I will say series. Jason Tatum played through Eesh. a pretty gruesome ankle turn in the finals a couple years ago. So I, I don't, I don't sense this he, one's going to bother him. Well, he going. finished the game, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you think? Look, after Game Three, Mazzulla said he doesn't expect the series to be easy, which is uh, obviously that's what you should say out loud. But are we still good with the Celtics to the finals? Any concerns? We can check in now that we're. Oh, they're winning in the East. Okay. Yeah, this is this is a lock at this point. You the, know, the, to lock we can't say lock. We you can't, can't say, say lock. What's the thing with lock? I wasn't on set. When it <laughs> we was can't set. say the Did word you read lock. your contract when you signed yeah. here? You okay, can't we can't lock. say. All right, oh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is close to a wrap. <laughs> All right, I'll say this is a lock. I got to win the okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it. I don't think it's a lock. I no, I mean, listen, it's got, again, it's, no series against the Miami Heat's going to be easy. You like so the, you like the Knicks locks I think they can. Like, no, she thinks the Spurs are going to make this playoff still and come back and beat the Celtics. You know what? If I was going to be offended, I would say you're sexist for even saying that out loud, but it wouldn't make sense, and I can't. Um, but, yeah, I still like him. I think the Kate Perzingis needs to play. He needs to be healthy, but to like, compete with the, the Nuggets and the Oklahoma City Thunder, who we're getting to, they look Man. insane. But, yeah, I still like them to win the East a lot. Okay, but not a lock. Thunder Pelicans, another game that happened, another team that's gone. 97-89, uh, the sweep is over. First series win since 2016 for OKC when 
KD blew a 3-1 lead to the Warriors. Jalen Williams with 24-8-4. SGA with 24-10. and 10. Holmgren had his 14. Brandon Ingram, I don't know what happened, but he had eight points. He was 2-14 from the field. That was rough to see. Uh, but the sweep over a Zionless Pelicans, I think, look, I, we didn't know what to expect from OKC. So now that they've gotten through the first round, what do you think? I, I couldn't be more impressed. And I predicted that there'd be no sweeps this year in the playoffs. That's true. Because especially in the Western Conference, they're so deep. There's so much talent there. Uh, the one to eight, two to seven, I thought it was going to be a lot more competitive than it is. And I didn't trust the Thunder because of their youth. They've never been there before. But my God, like after that game one scare where they, they were on the ropes there and yeah. missed the step through. They cleaned th some things up. They defended. And when you have a young team like that, it's hard. When you're a young guy, you want to score. You want to be the guy. And they somehow have this just collection of young kids that are bought into both so sides good. of the floor, that want to play defense, that want to play hard, that all support each other. There's no egos in this team. And it's transitioned now to, to wins. And this was a team that we were a little bit scared of because of their youth, but they are playing like an experienced, mature team. That's and crazy. they just they handled the Pelicans so easy. They've been my favorite team to watch in the playoffs so far. They take so much pride in getting stops, being <laughs> disruptive on the defensive end. Like, I've never seen a team play with so much joy on a defensive end. And on the offensive end, they're efficient, they're precise. A lot of downhill attacks, straight line drives. This team doesn't mess around with the basketball a lot. They don't, they don't mess around. They're not playing around with the basketball. They're going straight down the lane, and they're having fun doing it. They're doing the group interviews. It looks <laughs> like they're look, they look forward to game days, and they really enjoy it. They've been a, they've been a joy to watch. <laughs> That's a good year. way to look at it. They're looking forward to it. They are the youngest one seed in NBA history, which is fascinating mm. to me. Um, and Jalen Williams has been such a, a great story from all of this. Uh, his ceiling looks like what, Lou? Or Chandler? It's high. It's high. He's he's emerged as the second best player on his team. And that's that makes this team dangerous because on any given night he can be the best player on the floor. Or he can be the third option. These guys, they have so many in interchanging parts that makes them so dangerous. But he's emerged as a young, young rising star, man. <laughs> I'm really enjoying watching him play. Yeah, we're looking at an all NBA talent, multiple all stars, and he's gonna he's gonna be both of those next year. And we're gonna talk about this team. Not if Jamal Murray's not in first. They're not I'm uh, protesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not going anywhere, right? They have the most right. assets, no. the most picks, the best, youngest team. So they're going to be the number one seed probably get again better. next year. And Jalen Williams, and the, which means they're going to get two All Stars, and it's going to be him and Jamal or uh, him and SGA. So it's crazy the growth that he's had so quickly. It's, it's they are fun. I agree with Lou on that. Um, here they are with the local reporter Nick Gallo <laughs> team. Youngest number one seed in NBA history. You come away with four straight wins here in this series. How does this feel for this group right now? It feels good. We got more. All right. Congratulations, guys. Good luck. Every, every single post game. That. So much so that the other day, I think they blew off Ali LaForce to they go and do that TNT first. Go and then it. come back. I was like, that's amazing. But. Look, the, the passing of the baton, sometimes you forget as it happens. It's not so clear. But th this is great. This for the baton future. is not getting passed. What are you talking about? This is a robbery. Oh, this, <laughs> 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 this is a robbery. These young guys are taking it. Oh, you look at Anthony Edwards. You look at Shea Gilgis Alexander. They're not asking anybody for permission to proceed. These guys are kicking the door in. They're saying this is a changing of the guards. We are the guys now. It's us now. And you know what's crazy? Like, this is the first time in 20 years, no LeBron, Steph, and KD in the second round. And it's like, because of this new wave, SGA, yep. Ant, Luca, who cares? Like, the, like the NBA's in great hands, and, these, and the Thunder <clears throat> are a huge part of it, where they're just elite. And like, you see the interview, they're having fun. It's an Ten. AAU team where they're just taking the show on the road. They're going to plus in everyone's they ass. 10 guys in the first quarter last. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. It doesn't matter whoever's playing well, contributing on the defensive end, usually it gets that fifth spot too. It could be Wallace some nights, it could be Isaiah Joe some nights, it could be Wiggins some nights. It doesn't matter. They are so deep. And I guarantee you, these kids, they all want to be back here next year. That's my only problem with Jalen Williams. He can get so good and such a star where he wants to go somewhere and be the number one option because he's that good. And I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it doesn't happen. Keep grass ain't greener, man. Stay locked in. No, keep your seriously. Ass right there. Don't, don't leave this. this and they're going, you're a max player. They're going to give you everything. And they're still going to add pieces. Like, this is crazy to me that they're not done. Yeah. I mean, Chet Holmgren, when I spoke to him about a month ago, I mean, that's the thing he spoke, he spoke to is like, all of them being so secure within themselves and, and there's not any jealousies, no egos. Like he said, you know, he talks to other people around the league and that's not how it is. And you <laughs> see them after games. I mean, it's always like five, six of them with each other in these interviews. And why did they leave that, that TNT interview? Because 
they weren't with each other. And then Amazing. they went and, and went to their teammates. So um, this is a one-of-one -one situation. Obviously a historic team. First, the youngest team of all time to make it to the one seed to sweep. So they're, every single milestone is, is something different, something new for them. And yes, Michelle, they have so every pick to trade. God. They have a it's bunch also, of assets. It's also too much. It's, it's, too much. It's, it's hard not to cheer for them because it just happened organically. Like this is That's this is through the draft. This was through, you know I mean this wasn't powering up, squatting up, making a, a super team. This wasn't through free. Like but you had to be patient. You had to be so. They were patient. they were patient, but like this is just we just watched this them grow up right before our eyes and this just blossom. It's unbelievable. Like to a watch. lima bean plant. This is the Let's, second time Sam Presti's had this similar situation. Right, he had it. About about a decade plus ago, and now he has it again. Let's shine a light on Oklahoma City. I, I know you like to talk trash about small markets, Ooh. but I think because of that small market, it's not a lot to do. These yeah, guys are bonding sure. with each other. They're connecting with each other, and I think that's gone a long way for them being in this market. It reminds me of <clears throat> when I played for the Toronto Raptors. When you're across their border, you feel like you're the only team. You feel, you feel isolated a little bit, and we were such a tight group. And it, it paid dividends until we got swept in the playoffs. That's neither here nor there. But <laughs> completely different situation. <laughs> <laughs> completely different situation. Totally. But this okay, this Oklahoma City team, they remind me of that. But this also shows you that that OKC can be a destination just because of their production on the 100%. court. Like that, it looks that looks fun. It looks fun to me. Yeah, you know I mean, want to be like best people will there. want to go and play on that That's team why. for that coach. So it doesn't matter how small your city is if you're playing like this and having this mm -hmm. much fun winning. And you have the futures bright? Chandler, but you Chandler. I, well, he's now lying. You know he you wouldn't, wouldn't sign in Oklahoma City in free agency. I, I think Chandler might. I, I, I think, I I think a prime him. Chandler. This Chandler? It must be two well, Chandler. Well, I don't know about this Chandler, but a prime Chandler Chandler Parsons? It must be two Chandler. If the money's right, I think Chandler would sign money's in. right, I can be bought. big city boy right But when here. you said the thing about OKC coming in and getting Bronny, and I was like, you know, if I'm Bronny, Maybe I don't want to play with my dad necessarily. Like, this would be fun as a young person to go and play with these guys. But I will say this. What a pro wants, that commercial needs to go away now. It's, uh, it's driving all of us <laughs> mad uh, in our home. So let me ask you this. Clippers or Mavericks, Chandler, for this particular OKC team, what's the better matchup? The, oof, the better matchup for them would be the Clippers, I think. I think that the, hmm. the, the, that duo, especially with the uncertainty of Kawhi Leonard, I know we're talking about how they're playing better right now with him out, and they're not deferring to him. But I, I think with Luka and Kyrie can really present challenges for them defensively. That means SGA and Jalen Williams are both going to have to guard those guys, and they're going to have to work on both ends like they never have before tired, for possibly yeah. seven games. Um, but, yeah, they get to sit back and relax, though, and get a couple days here because it's only 2-2. I know. They're young. They don't even need this kind of rest. Yeah, they're ready right now. They what? wish the game was tomorrow. What a bonus. Who do you think they should face? If they want to win, mm -hmm. they should play the Mavericks. There he is. All right. <laughs> Just to make sure we had uh, post if they, if they want to play the Mavericks, <laughs> very much like Oklahoma City, the Clippers got a deep bench. So when they started subbing eight, nine guys, the Clippers can do the same thing. So I think it's going to come down to supporting cast again. When you got your main guys, they're going to be the main guys, the James Hardens, the Paul Georges, the SGAs, the Chets, the Jalen Williams. They're going to do their thing. This is going to come down to who you, can, who you can trust going to your bench in those top of the second quarter, top of the fourth quarter with those pivotal moments during the games. If the Clippers beat the Mavericks, they'll lose to the Thunder. If the Mavericks beat the wow. Clippers, they'll beat the Thunder. Things we'll never be able to prove. How interesting. You gotta stick to your, you gotta stick to your guns. That's all. I just hear Chandler sticking to his You're guns. You're right. <laughs> You're both on brand. And then they'll both lose the nuggets. It won't matter anyway. <laughs> I was but. gonna say it's all just for fun anyway. Yeah. But uh, ooh, play the music. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah, we got a Sean Skew. Yeah, ooh. right here, Dame, Giannis, Game Five. What? Damian Lillard, Giannis, and Didikumpo are not expected to play tonight in the potential elimination game five, Yikes. from what I'm told. Not I potential, mean, Shams. Chum they're cheese. both out. It's a Deuces. If Dame Lillard you was, guys said it. Under, if Dame Lillard was underwater yesterday getting cardio, Under he's not playing. And today. Giannis Under just started what? running again. Yeah, if they're, so, if they're swimming, the if they're swimming yesterday, they ain't playing tomorrow. <laughs> so Giannis and Fair. Dame both ran separately. Giannis ran for the first time on the court. Ooh. Dame ran... Uh, I guess for the first time since the Achilles strain, get his got his boot off so underwater. I mean, listen, when you have these types of strains, the calf strain clearly these, this non-contact calf yeah. strain is is tricky, and the the amount of risk that you have it creates complications. And the last thing the Bucks want to do it really would be, I mean, negligent. It would be malpractice if you're going to throw a guy out there 60% whatever down three one. 
the cost of what it could end up being. Right. At this point, you just want to gear up, make sure these guys are 100% ready for next season. And I, now you're covered if you're docked. Like, I agree. what was I supposed to do? Everyone's hurt. That's what I was going to say. It's like you're not going to probably win it all this year, anyways. Yeah. You, you just made this huge coaching change that not, not a lot of people saw coming. Don't do anything to, to worsen your chances next year because you still finish this season healthy, yeah. give a full offseason. Devastating season. that would be if one oh. of these guys came back and then you You're you still in great shape year. for next year if this yeah. season ended right now. So just don't do anything that's going to hurt your chances. Wow. Did not think we'd get here. Take a quick break. When we come back, a little you buying that. When running back run returns. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Ooh, y'all buying that? Uh, Bradley Beal fell out of game four. Didn't dab this was a moment, and we're gonna read into it. Cause what? Hey, buddy, let's be friends. He does not dap up his coach. Um, you buying that? That is something. That's a big problem. Yes, me and Lou have talked about this before. This is a way that you can kind of passive aggressively <laughs> not celebrate or show the staff that you're mad. Not getting up when someone makes a big bucket. Everyone else stands. Eating a sandwich. Ignoring the dap. Yeah, not no. being in the. Everyone's in the team huddle. You're sitting off to the side. This is a way players can kind of be petty and get their frustrations out by just letting the coach know. So yeah, is, is there something? Yes, for sure. You could tell Brad Beal's body language from really the, st the start has never been fully there. And something like this, mm. it seems so little and so silly, but yeah, he's, he's not stoked. Are we going to even see these three together? Is that it? I do hope there's another chance. I okay. think like like Luca and Kyrie last year. Remember okay. they were like, this is a bad trade. This isn't yeah. working. It's such the, a small sample but the size. the body language is... That's the, the problem. The and vibe the, is off. This doesn't please, feel like in good faith they want to run it back. Yeah, but run it back. Like get a point guard. Get a get a few more changes there. Don't fire the coach and think that... like Just, just give it time. These that. are three guys that have been in roles that they've never been in their life. No one... They all try to play point guard at some point. Yeah. Give it some time. Jesus. So we just talked about OK. Casey and the patients. Let's let's try that. Other people. Um, They're all also in healthy and in their prime. Exactly. Like let them let it work it out as kinks and get a whole summer to train together and get affiliated. Like enough. Uh, Lou, this next one's for you. Some guy says he heard that Devin Booker wants to play in New York and be a Nick. Who's who's the person? Uh, who cares? Are you buying that? De <laughs> Is it Spike Lee? It's, no, it's somebody much louder. Stephen A. Uh, who's, who's louder than Spike? Stephen A. Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I see what's going on. Um, okay. What do we think about that fit with Jalen Brunson? Just um, theoretically. I don't. I don't love it. When I when I see good teams playing well, I'm a big component of Same. don't disturb. Yep. Don't disturb the peace. The New York Knicks look like they found a groove that works for them. You don't want to bring in another alpha dog that's going to throw that off. You're going to have Julius Randle coming back. You're going to have to work him back in. Jalen Brunson's turning the corner on his career. Um, you got OG that's that's doing his thing. You got the supporting cast. You got all the pieces in New York. Leave it alone. Well, they're not going to have those pieces if Devin goes there because half of them are getting shipped. Correct. Yeah, why so, would you do that? By the way, disturb, I think the don't same. Don't disturb something good that you have. But also, like, who doesn't want to play in New York? I was going to say. Especially when they're now. popping now and they have the city, like, the, the city is buzzing. Jalen Brunson's a star. Like, of course he wants to. But does that play. mean the same person stopped the Donovan Mitchell campaign and we can move on to another person they're trying to shove into this Knicks? It's, it's working yeah. the way it is. Like, why would you even. Ruin that. Um, Luka Doncic, after losing game four at home, said, I feel like I'm letting Kyrie down with his poor shooting performances. Oh, that's so nice, Chandler. You buying, I don't know, you buying that? Is you know what, I like that he's saying this because as the best player, he does need to be elite. And I do <laughs> think he, he... He's sticking to his guns no matter what. <laughs> well, I like, by the way, this is... To his guns, no, no matter this is what. mature. This is, leader. this is leadership. This is something that we haven't seen from him. This is even the guy that we always see nagging on the refs and arguing. I mean, this this is a big step for me that he actually does see this and he feels it before the season's even, the series is even over. It's 2-2, two -two, Kyrie's new. He just get a, he's getting acquainted to that offense. So yeah, I, I'm buying it that he does me, feel bad. And as the, he's the, Luca, as good as Kyrie's been, Luca's the best player. It's Luca's team. Let me ask team. you yeah. a question. So, would, would you prefer this statement or Luca to stop complaining to refs 50% of oh, the time during well, games? I hate that. that. He's Can gotta I pray stop for that? Doing or? He's yeah. gotta stop doing that. That's, it can't be both. Probably his, so it's probably his biggest weakness. It's not anything 100%. on, it's that. And I think he gets so caught up in the hoopla that where he like, then he gets not focused and he shifts his energy on that. But I just like this from a mature leadership standpoint that yeah, he does feel bad. He does need to be better and he does have to be the best player on the court. Uh, don't worry, Lou, because you get a Clippers question next. Uh, they're 2-0 without Kawhi Leonard now in this series. And of course, when he's been there, they've lost both of those games. Harden and PG have figured things out and elevated in his absence. So, Lou, are you buying that the Clippers should just go ahead, keep resting Kawhi until round two and see what happens? Yeah, especially if he's not healthy. 
You know, you got, you, again, we talked about their depth. When one of these guys go out, you still have a Paul George. You still have James Harden to lean on. You got Russell Westbrook coming off of your bench. So you have more than enough firepower to keep this thing going, especially if they won two without him. Allow him to get back healthy, get back on his feet, allow inflammation to go down. That way he can be the Kyle, Kyle, uh, Kawhi Leonard that you need him to be. So I say you rest him and take your chances with the guys that you have because you still got more than enough. I agree with that. And that, that doesn't mean they're a better team without him. They're a better no. team this series. But like to get to win a championship, to beat the Thunder, they need Kawhi Leonard. But that doesn't mean this series they're playing better without him. So, yeah, you're winning without him. Don't keep doing that. Are we going to the game tomorrow or what? I'm Have definitely you met going. Me? No. Uh -huh. Definitely going. Let's go. Let's go together. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Corporate, we need courtside. Who, who's uh, making this happen? <laughs> courtside? Yes, I'm in. If it ain't on the wood, it ain't no good. We got to do some research. <laughs> yeah, do some research. That's some a good point. Do no, you no, no. no. Good I just want to see you two go at it. Oh, I would love that. You know, we need we need behind the scenes footage. I'll, I would I'll love even, that. I'll even go an extra mile and say I can accommodate you guys. What? Not with tickets, but with everything oh, else. <laughs> free hot dogs, no Point, drinks. Free hot dogs. <laughs> Pointless. Pointless. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, come back with a little more. We'll run it back. Free hot dogs, dude. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite thing that we do, fit or break. All right, first, it looks like we got a lot of Jalen Williams, so let's, it's going to be over here. Yeah, here we oh. go. Oh, oh, oh. I hate that. This is, that's cold. This I think is that's game cold. three. No, that's weak. I don't like it. It's weak. Great player. Shit out. It's not even that. It's not even that cold in New Orleans right now. <laughs> mm. Well, Stay I don't know about the. I don't know about the mask. These are like. I don't it's know like about the pants, but I like the. the I like the top. Stone. The what about cute? the top? Fit ain't nan, Jalen. Yeah, the ain't rhinestone's it. a little. All right. Brick. Don't worry. There's more. That's a brick. Um, he's gonna give us more things to look at because he's. No, he did. No, no. He, he, did. Did. Game no he did this. Yes, no, this, is, this is Game Four's outfit. You stop it. Why would I lie? It's like a cool video game character. That is just, uh, is that Adidas too? What is that top? It does look like it is. It's, a, it's a Adidas football practice helmet. Is that real? You just uh, made that up. Like it looked uh, like He's just making stuff uh, up this now. This is sick. He looks like, a, like an astronaut, like a bad guy astronaut. I just picture how He's sweaty I'd be in those yes. pants. It's Darth Vader. It's Darth Vader. How sweaty would we be in those pants? Oh, why, is the, why is the sweater so short? We'd lose a bunch why of weight. Why am I seeing it's a stupid legs. outfit? It's a dumb outfit. All right, fine. Let's see another one. Yeah, we don't uh, know. Russell Westbrook is next. <laughs> I mean, he I like can. The, I like he the can. color scheme. <laughs> yeah, he's like. <laughs> you know, I've never had muscles like that, so I was yeah, never, he's got a great I was body. never encouraged Don't like to wear outfits? that type of shirt. He's you know? got a great oh, body, but no. I mean, I wouldn't wear uh, Well, he I, can, I, though. I wouldn't say what, what he did, is, but it works. I, I, all right, it's a fit. I think, I think it's good. I like it. It's a fit. Uh, SGA always, uh, oh, interesting. Not yeah. as like high fashion like as this. usual. I like this. Makes sense. He's always it? clean, you know. What is that? Is that a But again, he could wear something that Russ wore and it would be fine because it's them. But when Different. you see other guys so yeah. dress it up. I was actually yeah. shocked to see this sort of baggy outfit after the Russ one. I thought it was going to be something sort of in the same vein as that. All right, Miles Turner, very tall man. Wow. Wow, we wow. Yeah, see. Shut up, Belt. That is special. His, his, his manager <laughs> to, the, to the right. What is even nah, happening? Nah, hey, Miles. It's just not it. I have that coat, actually. Hey, yeah. You do. You do have that coat. I do have that coat. Yay. Yeah, that's atrocious. That's, I don't love it. Uh, well, obviously, I, mean, I love it, but okay, guys, Deuce. Oh, the vest is a thing. Whoa. You know what? He's what balling right now. What is he good for? Dude, okay, Absolutely nothing. Wow. Say it again. I like yeah. it. I think All it looks right. cool. Uh, Shams, you could rock There's that a vest. reason the producers uh, pick these outfits because they're all don't horrible. I don't trust people with vests, but I don't know. You don't trust people. Well, hold on. We just discovered something. So there's, yeah, a, so there's a guy down <laughs> in, in New Orleans wearing face masks, and it's a guy in <laughs> Philadelphia going sleeveless. Yeah. Uh, and now I don't get it. Yes! That's clean. He's the bad guy from Bad Boys 2. He's Johnny right Tapia. He, he, he looks undercover. Enjoy the games tonight. We'll be back <laughs> manana. He's, he's all soft. Run it back, run it back, run it up. Then run it back, yeah, yeah.